Welcome to Talk Art. Uh, my name is Cindy Choisy, also known as SinLab. I'm a visual artist and a fashion designer. When I was in school, I was in science first. So you will always find things that look like cells or stuff like that, and also um, electronic components. I really like the aesthetic of the inside of, ele of electronics. So it's, it's, a, it's a mix between electronics and roots, and it, it takes different shapes, so you can you can feel it, but you don't really see it, but there, there are a lot of electronic aesthetic in it. I study fashion in Paris, so I'm, I'm a fashion designer and also pattern designer. I design the, the drawings to put on the, on the fabrics. And fast, I came to going on bigger scales, so that's how I came to painting, because my world is more about colors than shapes or with clothing. So I really slide from one world to another. I also do fashion design once in a while, but right now I'm really, really concentrating on uh, painting, and I paint with acrylic most of the time. Yeah, acrylic is a totally diff different feeling when you paint and it also dries very fast. <laughs> so I kind of like that because I always scrape my, my paintings, I scratch, I scrape, so I play with it and it has to dry fast for me to get to the another, another layer, so I rather that media and I find it easier. I really like to see the old walls where you can see the different colors coming from the first layer, second layer, so I really function like that for my background. So I really work a lot on my backgrounds before I come to the foreground. And so that's why you always find things written but scratched out. You really have to look closely to see them. The background are really important for me. They are very rich, although you can't really see it at the first look. But old walls. In general, it's Caribbean history or the Caribbeans in general. So I, I do a lot of research on the Amerindians to really try to mix back with my art today what they used to do, like the petroglyph, like their symbols, things like that. Also, the Caribbean vibe. With, it's, my, my work is very eclectic, so the, the old walls come, come back a, a lot because we have a, a climate that's particular and the, the, the houses don't live the same way like in, in Europe. So, yeah, 
the music, there's a lot of music in my work, the colors are very bright most of the time. And you would always find messages about our history hidden inside some small, small little symbols. So it's like a, it's like a game, it's like a maze, you have to follow the, follow the tracks. And like, there is a, a first lecture, a second lecture, a third lecture. <laughs> My family is very mixed, mixed up, so I was really interested by genealogy, but also at the Caribbean scales. And being a Caribbean girl and living in Europe, you always have a bunch of questions, but, but you're not black, but you're not white, what are you, where you come from, and I have to say, I'm a mix of everything. So I really questioned myself about my Caribbean identity, and to go through that, I had to really follow the history and try to understand with worry how we really came to be a different nation because we're a very special nation in the Caribbean. We don't realize that we are a, we are a nation, but like brothers and sisters, we are different. The vibes that I got from Paris was an urban vibe that I mixed up with my Caribbean history. I also like artists like Basquiat, that's very contemporary. But I also like, I don't know if you know, Gustave Moreau is very classical. So I really mix some things that I find in classical painting with, with our tradition and modernity. When I look at, when I do research and I look at the, the cave carving and things like that, it's, it's some, I mean, I really look at the patterns did by, with, the, with the, the rocks also. So it gives you a weird background and some symbols all, all over. So it really, it really, I, I really like that. That's why I try to translate in my paintings. They really come from the historical part of our lives. Yeah, I really, I talk, because some painting is hidden, I talk about slavery, I talk about the Amerindian uh, the disappearance, I talk about all those things. I have a, a painting that I sold very quick. It's a map of the Caribbean, but in the background, it's a blue back, background, I have a text that I wrote, but it's in French. It's about the story, and sometimes it's kind of, not violent, but aggressive, but that's how it's supposed to be told, I think. And that's it.
and I called it Abiyayala and her necklace. Abiyayala is a name that the Amerindian community they got together in 92 and they decided to get another name for the American continent because America is a European name and Abiyayala means um, land in her full maturity, fertility or something like that, yeah, maturity. And her necklace is the Caribbean. So it's a, I don't have it there, it's in French, I never translated it in English, but it's, it's kind of interesting, I think. And that's the background of, our, of, the, of the map and also of, is the background of all our, not only cultures, but our, our ways. <laughs> Sometimes people wouldn't understand certain, uh, certain beliefs because it's really mixed up. You know, you have a little bit of Amer Amerindian mixed with European and African, it's, it's weird, and people don't really understand how how oh, it's proud and it's proud and pain but it's proud <laughs> When they tell you the Caribbean story uh, very quick it's like the European came, they killed all the Indians, brought in the Africans. There are, and there are some Amerindians still and sometimes like for example in French Guyana there is a big problem because they are considered as extinct, extinct but they're still there so there is like a, a a legal hole <laughs> that for our, for the land it, it's like they don't really exist. So you also have to remember what happened and remember that they're still there, like in Dominica, they're still there. North America, they're still there. I'm really trying to follow a road that is not really marked, <laughs> traced. So my goal is to get my name out there, get to meet people, to see what's happening, to see how, how is, where it's going to take me. It's more like I'm on a journey, I don't really know where I'm going. <laughs> I'm just going. <laughs> but I don't really know. I change direction sometimes, I come back on my path. That's why I came back home, because I had to come back to the middle, the center, to go back after, I think. So I needed that time home when I came back in Take, um, how do you say that? To stand up straight home first, to be able to jump there and jump somewhere else. But I needed to feel stable here, so I came back home. Really concentrate on St. Martin because a big part of my work is about the Caribbeans, all the Caribbeans in general, but to concentrate on St. Martin. And that's why I'm doing pieces that are more about St. Martin. Like, when I was away with it, uh, a large vision, Caribbean world, and I'm focusing on St. Martin a little bit too. And I don't know where I'm going after. <laughs> So um, I did an exhibition, a, a project with a friend. She was doing jewelries, uh, according to my paintings. I mean, we we thought we talked about it before anyway. Uh, each element is represented by a goddess, a goddess that I choose from one of our Caribbean cultures because Caribbean is just a big a big mix. The first one is uh, water. It's Yemaya. She's Afro-Cuban. 
it's a Yoruba goddess and she represents the mother of, of, of everything so she's holding life in her hands in the background you can see the, um, the slave ships the, because that's one of the main goddess that the African brought back to the Caribbean because she was, a protect, she was supposed to protect them uh, during the trip so they was really grateful to her when, when they reached uh, where they was going so they, uh, therefore, and her hair—you can see the reef, and her background—you can see the the abyss because she's she's everywhere, the bright the bright side, the dark side. Then we have Swaliga, it's a goddess that I invent to represent Earth. It represents St. Martin, salt and cotton. So you can see in her hair the map of St. Martin. In the background you have the salt ponds, the maps of the salt ponds, a little bit of salt in her hair. And I print lace to do her hair to represent the, all those fabric that used to come from Europe and that people used to mix up and do how they could with all those, all those cloth and, and those nice dresses. And she has like a bustier with pure cotton, cotton balls. Salt and Cotton is the, is the first one from the series. She's the first one who who came out of my brain. So you find the salt, the cotton, the cotton balls, the cotton and the, the shape of the lace, but also the Coralita flower. The Coralita flower is very important to me because it's, we don't have a totally luxurious nature in St. Martin and those little pink little Tinkerbells are a spot of color that people don't even notice anymore. They're always there, people see, see them as just a parasite. It's like, it's taking over everything, but it's so nice, so I really, Put it in a lot of paintings. I have it like coming around, <laughs> and and this one, the tip of the the coralita flower points to French Quarter where I live. Tip 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 of the plant, and she has branches in her hair with salt growing on it. Um, then we have Guabanses. She's a Arawak goddess, the lady of the wind. You can see the, um, the position of her hands, one up, one down, was already the, the symbol they used to represent her is a face with one hand up, one hand down. And when you look at it, it really looks like the symbol for the hurricanes we have now. And um, when you look at the weather channels, it's one up, one down because of the, the swirl um, movement. Her hair also does that movement. Then we have Kali, Kalima, she's the Hindu goddess, the purifying fire. Uh, she, she is the one who's supposed to help you to elevate your mind and to separate yourself from the, your ego and your, your, your physical living. But she's not that mean, she looks kind of mean. But she's okay. And she's holding the, um, the sword of knowledge.
Thanks for joining us on Talk Art and remember, enjoy every day.